All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am here with the legend, Mr. Shaw Grigsby. How you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Heck yeah. I don't know well, about that legend stuff, oh, but yeah, I'm just a fisherman. Time. Noel, um, it's awesome to meet you. Uh, just had a few questions. So um, I fish myself as a co-angler. Um, I've done a lot of tournaments before, um, but I'm trying to make it to the level you guys do. So um, big question I had was if you could give, like, one or two tips specifically for co-anglers, you know, most of the time you're fishing behind somebody right. you never know who you're going to get paired with i've never had a bad boater where you know i've heard about bad boaters who don't give you space and all that stuff but um you know you got to make the best of the situation yeah. so if you could give one or two big tips for co-anglers you have anything you could recommend absolutely so i started my fishing career as a co-angler as a back of the boater so <clears throat> back in the day we'd fish but then when we'd have our state tournaments for our club the, the state club tournament we would have the top six. Top six from our club against top six of all the other clubs in the state and get together. Well, you always had to have three boaters, three non-boaters. I would be a non-boater, so I would fish out of the back of the boat because I, I had no issues fishing out of the back of the boat. I kind of grew up, and my buddy would fish the front, and I'd fish the back. So, you know, I kind of learned that way. And the big thing you'll learn is that you don't want to do exactly what they're doing. So if they're throwing a jig or a swim jig, you might want to change it up a bit. Maybe put a swim bait on not, rather than a swim jig um, and, and do something a little different. Watch where he's casting and cast where he doesn't. And, you know, if you behind a stud that's really catching them, you may have to cast farther back in the slop than what he is or all the way to the edge than what he's doing. So you just change up. Don't do exactly what he's doing because he's probably going to siphon the fish up doing that. Yeah. So if you change it up a little bit, you know, sometimes I've even had guys that got me by, I'm going down sight fishing down a bank, and he's throwing a Carolina rig out, and all of a sudden he catches three or four of the pre-spawners coming in. So don't hesitate to do something different that's the way you're going to do be really successful good deal all right that's that's good stuff there um okay um another big question i have for you is uh, so uh actually we are going to be moving to central florida to tampa area yeah um i've wanted to do it for a lot of years and now we're making the jump so i am super pumped to start fishing the winter haven chain harris chain Kissimmee chain all that stuff st john's is only a little bit a couple hours yep. away okeechobee so i've actually fished one bass nation tournament in florida a couple of years ago and i got second place um Ooh, nice. just on a vacation i was happy about it um, but I don't have a whole ton of experience down in Florida. I know it's totally different from Ohio. So um, maybe not even just Florida specific, but or Florida specific. What would you recommend for, um, you know, if somebody's moving, say, to Florida or from up north to down south, some techniques that um, techniques or color differences, just some little tips or yep. things to work on so the big thing you'll notice about florida is it's got tons of vegetation i mean you got and reeds. you know we have the least amount yeah, in right. any state here right, right. Yeah. so you're gonna have reeds you're gonna have you know all this emergent vegetation cattails you're gonna have lily pads and then you're gonna have all the submergent stuff from eelgrass and hydrilla and just it goes on forever so you need to learn to fish weeds, okay. which is generally meaning baits that are weedless and baits you can work around the vegetation. And you'll do a lot of flipping, punching in that heavy vegetation. Okay, good deal, good so deal. So that's, that's, uh, that's what you're going to be doing. And other than that, you know, we love top water. Oh, yeah. Trust oh, yeah. me, top water is really good. I think anybody who doesn't like top water, uh, something not quite right up there. But, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it's like the best of the best. Swim jig is uh, one thing that I don't really really have hardly any experience at all with but swim jig is one thing that I personally was going to um it basically I've, I've learned baits in the past where I've said okay well um I suck at this bait I don't have any experience or confidence so I'm gonna go fishing and only take that bait so I plan on doing that with swim jigs and you know, that's, what, other that's stuff. what you do anytime you want to learn a new technique you take all your rods and leave them except for that, that technique. Because what happens is 
let's say you want to learn your swim jig and you take swim jig, but you have all your other rods, you throw that swim jig about 20 minutes and you quit. You're like, yeah. no, I'm going to pick up this because I want to catch one. Yeah. Well, if you don't have that rod there, then guess what? You're going to yeah. keep throwing the swim jig. And then you're going to figure out that, oh, I need to do this to get a bite, or I have to fish it slow, or I have to fish it, or I have to throw it around this cover rather than this. So you'll learn the intricacies of the bait by doing that. So I absolutely, that is the best way to learn any technique is isolate yourself, just take that one rod, that one technique, and go to town. Heck yeah, I completely agree. Um, if you had to have one, I know a lot of times in a big tournament, if I'm if I was fishing for big money, um, I, I normally always you know take some time some sometime throughout the day and uh, take like a snack break or lunch break or something. Maybe in a real big tournament for big money, you might not you know want to take as much time. But if you had to have uh, like your one go to snack or meal on the water, what so would it be? when I go and it, since we're fishing against the clock, you know. I just take little things like Cliff Bars. Mm. They're they're you know high protein, just quick and easy. You can eat a quarter, a half, or a bite. You know, set on the seat. You keep fishing. You take another bite. You're fishing the whole time, so you're never having to take a break. The only thing you do maybe take a sip, but you know I'll make a cast and grab my I keep a big Yeti and I'll be sucking on that while I'm fishing or whatever. But uh, or when you crank up to drive the boat and you're leaving to go somewhere, then you can take one real quick. But I usually take some healthy things like that apples. Uh, uh, you know, oranges or whatever, and the cliff bars are there all the time. Will you take a banana on the boat? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I, I almost always have bananas in my boat. Yeah, so. I, it's a big superstition, it's but uh, yeah. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, so I've filmed one more cast for 20 something years, you know, and, and I would always carry bananas. And the worst person on people about bananas are saltwater guides. Mm-hmm. You know, you go offshore and they're thinking the boat's going to sink, you get struck <laughs> by lightning and everything. And I would always have bananas in the boat, but I'd never tell them till we caught the final fish, you know, and we're like, we know we got the show, you know, I just landed a 150 pound or 180 pound tuna and we're trying to hold him up. And I'm like, man, I'm done, you know, fish, fished it for an hour and a half. And then I go, all right, now it's time to celebrate. I'd break it out and they just freak, you know, and I'm like, dude, there's no way, you know, <laughs> so there were a few of them that got pretty, pretty heated about it because they thought we weren't going to make it back in. Never had an issue. Heck so, yeah. What the heck? Well, hey, um, I don't really got anything else, um, but hey, I really appreciate it. It was great to meet Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, I just I really appreciate your time, man. Right. Do you have anything uh, going on that you want to well, promote I just, or anything? I can just say that enjoy anything when big? you when you get down to Florida, enjoy it because oh, it's wonderful. I can't wonderful. wait. I it's can't wonderful. wait. I'd love to fish against you someday, or at least in the boat with you. Might someday. be able to do that. I only yeah. got a few years left, man. I'm hey, getting old. I'm gonna retire sometime. I got to get up there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, great to meet Thank you again. You. Yes, sir. All you right. have a great one. All right.